Will I actually be able to record this without the program taking a shit? That's a question. That's a good question. Okay, so, um, we're back to the old glory days of this channel where technical issues are not just common but expected, and actually getting through a recording without something going wrong is going to be amazing, and the beginning of the recording has to begin with me addressing this. So, we all know what Zelda Classic is, right? Like, it's been a while since I've actually done, like, a proper LP with this, but, I mean, obviously I used it for my games. Um, I also recorded an entire quest that was not made by me back in, like, frickin' 2008 or 9 or whatever it was. Um, we'll probably be talking about that one a bit later on, but, uh, let's, let's just get this started. I don't know why there's so many unnecessary files on here, so we're going to be getting rid of half of these. And let's hope that I don't frickin' crash the program again. I, apparently, I'm just not allowed to click outside the window while I'm recording. I don't know if it's OBS throwing this off or what this is, but I just have to be careful. So this is Isle of the Winds, made by Dark Flame Wolf. Um, I believe it was uploaded in June or July 2004. I would double check, but I can't click outside the window or otherwise the game will crash. So we'll assume that that's correct. Um, but uh, yeah, she's made a number of quests and I'll be talking a little bit more about that in a minute once I kind of get this beginning out of the way. Um, By the way, sound effects are really goddamn loud, and there doesn't seem to be a way for me to lower them. There is a, like, sound settings thing, but I can turn this all the way down to zero, and it doesn't help. <laughs> so, like, I don't know. I, I, I think Zelda Classic is just really badly optimized for newer systems, because this is version 1.92. Um... And I think this one was finished in, like, 2001. It's it's really freaking old. So, I don't know, whatever. We're just gonna... I'll, I mean, I'll leave this muted. It's not like it makes a difference. But, yeah, just be prepared for loud sound effects and probably not being able to hear the music half the time. It's just kind of par for the course at this point. So, Forbidden Cave. Having Dreams. Portend and ill fate. I don't know if that's actually like I don't know what portend means. I assume that's a real word. Okay, heal a spot. So anyway, this is Errol, I assume. Oh, and we start with the uh, the side slash. Okay, I didn't expect that for some reason. All right, so I'm going to explore this first island a little bit while I explain what the hell this game is and why I'm playing it. Um, so, like I said, this was made by Dark Flame Wolf. Um, this is actually the only quest I've ever played made by her. She has made other ones, um, like at least seven other ones as far as I'm aware. There's quite a few of them. If you check Piers AC, you'll see the list. Um, there's no real reason why I'm playing this one other than just kind of like this weird white whale effect I have with this game. Um, I don't know if that's the best way to put it. So, um, I've explained this in the past, but in 2005, uh, my family went through a bit of a, like, crisis, and we lived out of hotels for a while, and this was, um, also a time when I, uh, got my first laptop, um, under possibly shady circumstances. Let's not worry about that. Um, and so one of the things I did was, uh, ugh, God, no. Um, I, I basically, whenever we had to switch locations, I never knew if I was going to have good internet access at the new place or not. So I, uh, made it a point to download a lot of games so I would have something to do when I had no internet. And so I got, like, just various, like, NES, Super Nintendo, N64 ROMs, that kind of stuff. But I also got some Zelda Classic quests. And so, 
I was looking through the database on Pure ZC and came across this one, and I'm like, this one sounds kind of cool, I'll give this one a shot. Um, I played through about half of it, and I think I got stuck, and basically have not touched the game since, and I would like to actually finish this. So, we're gonna give this a shot. Um, and for the record, this is not replacing Kid Icarus Uprising. I think I'm going to be alternating between the two. Um, but I just kind of felt like doing this because Zelda Classic's been really on, uh, like heavily on my mind lately because of Victus Adventure 3 stuff. And I'll, I'll be talking more about that later, but don't worry about it right now. The game still hasn't been technically worked on yet, it's just in the, in the idea stage. Um, but yeah, that's kind of my attachment to this one. And... Um, Magic pot, wasn't expecting that. Alright then. I will mention, um, for anybody who recalls the other uh, major Zelda Classic quest that I've done, which was uh, Mega Man Dr. Wily's Revenge, uh, that game is made by somebody named Pito, and, um, Pito and Dark Flame Wolf actually work together on a project called Lost Isle, which is generally considered one of the best Zelda Classic quests from what I've seen, and I have still never actually played that one or even really ever seen anything of it. Um, someday I probably should play it. I really don't have any reason for not doing so. I think I've just kind of been like... Around the time it came out... I was busy with other stuff and didn't really think about it, and then I basically just kind of kept forgetting that it existed. And every time somebody reminds me of it, I'm either like not in the mood to go through a full quest, or did I already go in this house? Um, no I didn't. I mean, I can't just take these, what is this? Oh, this is, okay, this is probably a potion shop, I need a letter, never mind. I, I like how for a second here, I go in here, and I'm actually thinking that there's three separate items on the ground. You can't actually do that in ZC, so, like, I don't know why I thought that. Never mind. <clears throat> am, 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 I, am I saying words? I think I might be saying words. I don't know. But, point is, I haven't played Lost Isle. I really should. It's apparently really good. Um, I, it's just it's one of those really massive involved games that I never I was always like not wanting to jump into. I, I kinda have to like get mentally prepared for it. This one I don't think is gonna be quite as involved. Um, basically the idea behind this one is it's it's a Wind Waker style game in which like you travel between islands but with basically without the giant ocean stretches in between. Um once I complete the first dungeon and get the raft, I think basically the entire overworld is open to me, and I just kind of find islands and explore them. Um, and there's, like, it, it's basically Wind Waker on crack, in the sense that, like, all of the islands are kind of crammed together into one tiny living space, um, which is for the best, because nobody wants to travel through, like, 90 screens of water in between stuff. As we have established many times, the ocean is a waste of space. So, anyway, I think I've explored most of this island at this point. Um, I can't really buy anything, obviously, because I don't have any money. I have some money, but not a whole lot. And I think this is the dungeon. I've now seen two heart pieces that I can't reach. Can I get that one? I'm not sure. The other one I needed, the, like, the candle to burn down the tree, I was assuming. Let me walk around one more time and see if there's a reason I can't get to that one. At some point after this recording, I'm probably going to have to uh, check out uh, Beta 184. I, I say this as if anybody knows what I'm talking about. If you know what Zelda Classic stuff, like, if you know about the version differences, you probably already know this, but the one I'm running in this, the one I'm using to run this is 1.92 Beta 183, which is the one recommended for it. Um, and the only major problem with this version 
is if you ever open the map screen more than once in a single play session, the game just crashes, so you can't ever really use the map very well. Um, 184 fixes that bug, but I think it introduces new bugs, and there was no mention of if it was okay to run this game in, like, the, um, quest description on Pure ZC. So, I assume I probably can, but I'm not sure. Do I need a key from some- oh, I can blow this up. But yeah, I'm probably gonna try 184, um, because it'll be a more pleasant experience overall if I can use the map more than once without the game dying. If I ever recognize what a song is from, I'll let you know. I don't know what this song is. But yeah, I think I got up to like level 6 when I played this, but keeping in mind that was like 12 years ago, I don't think I'm going to remember much about this game. The one thing I can definitely recall about it is this kind of foresty island with music that I thought was really pretty that I'm assuming was from, like, um... I don't know why I assume this, but it, it sounds... It, it, uh, now I can't even fucking think of the name of the game. Um... Waits for 20 minutes while I think about it. Secret of Mana, that was it. I've never played that or even, like, heard anything of it, but I want to say the song is from that. I might have, like, looked it up in the MIDI info and saw that it was from that game and, like, have vague remembrance of that. But I don't know, when I get to that point, I'll mention which song it is. I'll be like, hey, this was the one. Ooh, there's Wall Masters in there. Do I need to kill those? I remember that. I remember using super bombs to blow up skulls and having a hard time finding the super bombs or like needing to pay a lot of money for them in shops. I think those lead to like optional levels or something. I don't really know. I already forgot if I've been in the screen. Apparently I have not. At least I can still view the mini map. Anyway, I guess uh, now that I've rambled enough about whatever the hell it was I've been rambling about, um, to address the uh, elephant in the room here, um, I mentioned at the end of the Pokemon Yellow thing that um, Victip's Adventure 3 has moved out of it's never going to happen ever status and into I would like this to happen status. And so for the past, like, couple weeks... I've been putting a lot of thought into how I want that game to play out, and right now I basically have the entire plot figured out, um, but here's the thing, if I start working on that game, you'll know, like, I'm gonna make sure that this is mentioned, like, it'll, it'll be clear, but, um, do I wanna go on these stairs? I guess I might as well. Um, it's in the planning stages, because I want to have a very solid idea of what I'm doing before I jump into anything. I also uh, sent a private message to uh, Pito, because he's a pretty accomplished quest maker um, that I've actually been in contact with before. It's been like eight years since I've talk talked to the guy, but, like, eh. We've at least spoken, so, like... And we were on good terms, so... I'm basically wanting to talk to him to find out, like, if my scope is too high. Is that a good way to put it? Like, the, the ideas that I have are extremely ambitious. Let's just put it that way. And I don't know if I'm actually aiming too high and going to be trying to do something that is impossible. So... Oh, hello, boss. Um... So before I start any kind of actual work, I want to have pretty much the entire thing planned out from the beginning. And, um, during streams and stuff, I've revealed some stuff about the game already, like what I plan on doing. 
I really don't want to spoil too much about it, but um, I don't mind saying some things. And so, like, I'll probably end up repeating some of that info during this, but I don't really want to do it right now. When I get to, like, a dead section where I'm just exploring and don't know what I'm doing, I'll probably talk about that a little bit. But yeah, it's like, I don't want to say don't get your hopes up, because I want to see the game made probably more than anyone else. It's just I'm afraid of starting something that I won't be able to finish is my main thing. And I expect that the game will probably take, like, at least two years, even if I work on it extremely, like, heavily during that time and don't take any major breaks from it, so, yeah. I have no idea how it would cut into video making or anything like that, so that's why I'm just kind of hesitant to really start so far. But yeah, I think we'll probably go through this dungeon and then maybe be done with this at the end of that, I don't know. I don't remember if uh, dungeons have heart paces in this game or not. It would have said in the readme, or the quest description, rather. But, uh, I think it said there were two on each major island. I can't remember if it said there were any in the dungeons. Alright, well, I got the arrow now. There was a room that I needed to shoot a statue's eye. I need to go find where that was. I like how the block came back, that's pretty good. I guess this is a... what was that? Hold on. You see that? On the left? Is that a bombable wall? No, it can't be. Because be, that would make more than one secret flag on the screen. I mean, let me try anyway. Yeah, I didn't think so. That's weird. I don't know what that is. That's kind of the fun thing about playing through these sort of quests, um, when you have experience with the program, is uh, you know how everything works, so you can kind of tell if, like, even if something isn't supposed to be obvious, you can kind of tell if there's, like, something hidden, or knowing the limitations, you can tell if, like, something is supposed to be possible or not. Because it's like, since that screen had a box you could already blow up, there's no way you could have a separate secret on that screen that isn't attached to it. Alright, so what am I doing? I assume there's another screen with a statue I have to shoot or something like that. Oh, here's a bombable wall I didn't even notice. Hold on. Maps are nice. Yeah, this is the Taurus dungeon, so I guess it looks kind of like a bull. Um, Am I missing a screen there? Yeah. Let me just go back to the beginning, and uh, now that I have the arrow, I'll see if there's any things that I can open. I don't think I've gotten to that chest yet, have I? No. To approach that from a different side. Okay, does shooting the statues in here do anything? No. And... oh. Hello. Really? I'm glad I found that now. Because I would have frickin' never thought to come back here for it. Yeah, because at the very beginning of the dungeon, I didn't have a key to open the door. But I got one from bombing the wall on the left, so I figured that was what I had to do. I guess if I hadn't noticed that, then I would have just eventually gotten desperate and pushed the statues, but yeah. Alright then. I don't know if there's, like, extra keys or anything in this game. I think usually quest makers don't do that because it kind of throws off your level design if you have extra optional ones, then you can skip, like, entire areas. I guess it just depends on the person. If you're doing, like, a totally classic Zelda 1-style thing where it's just free roaming and not really any puzzles other than just exploring exploring stuff, then maybe that'll work better on that kind of thing. 
Okay, so let's... I still have not actually gone over here, apparently. Let's do that. That is a music pad. I do not have an ocarina, or flute, or whistle, or whatever you want to call it, so... I cannot do that, apparently. I guess I have to come back here later. Unless that is in this level, I assume it's in a different one. Because I already got the bow and arrow, that's kind of like the item of the dungeon, I'm guessing. Okay, so that needs a key and a whistle, and then it, I'm guessing, loops back and lets you get whatever is in this treasure chest over here. Which might just be money, so I don't know. I guess we'll worry about that at some point. Um, not that I'll ever freaking remember that it's in here. I don't know, I might. So, I have not. Before I go to where the boss is, I want to make sure I got everything on the left, because it still looks like I was missing a couple screens there. It, The room with the Dodongos might not show up on the map though because that was it had different music so that means it was a different d map so it would actually make sense if that one wasn't there but i just want to make sure i'm not missing anything else so this was you push the block and i think it was just a single screen with like a chest there wasn't anything else over here right yeah okay so this room's good Speaking of needing different D maps for rooms with different music, I'll have to keep that in mind for my game because I plan on having a fucking shit ton of different songs in it. So levels will just be not mappable, I guess. No, I don't know. Okay, so we go left, and then we go up, and then does it dead end? Okay, now that's stairs, and then the stairs put me up there. I think I explored everything up there already, but just making sure. Yeah, I already did that. I know that revisiting the same rooms over and over is super thrilling. But I like to be thorough, you never know if I'm gonna miss something. Gotta love that continuous heartbeat. Oh, shit. And we have our first death, which was entirely my own fault and should not have happened. You know what, I'm just going to go ahead and assume that that area is cleaned out and not bother to go back there. It'll annoy me, but if I get stuck I'll go over there, and right now I'm not really stuck, so I should be fine. Oh, right, this was a dead end also. Um, actually, hold on. Can I shoot the small statue? Yes, okay. But I have to do it from that side. For some reason, I never remember that Stalfoses take two hits. I always think that they only take one. Neither of these are... Okay. I have been up that way, right? Looks like it, yeah. Okay, so we go over here, we shoot the thing. The rope gets in the way, the other rope gets in the way. And we've got spike traps, excellent. And there's a lot of bombable walls in this place. You better hope that you got plenty of bombs. I guess you can go buy them from the town if you need to, but... That costs much. That looks like a crackable block, too. Hold on. Okay, yeah. So remember when I said you can't have more than one secret on a screen? This proves that wrong, but only because this was a door. Oh, god damn it. Okay, let me freaking do this first. This was a secret combo, and the other one was a door. Those are two separate things. Oh, hey, we do have the whistle in this level.
Also, the reason that the things are respawning whenever I leave rooms is because apparently this is a dungeon D map. Um, I yeah, I guess that's obvious because I can't move when I'm in doorways. Obvious, I say, as if 90% of the people who are watching this know what the hell I'm talking about. It's like with uh, my experience with the editor is mostly limited to 190, which is super primitive. So like whenever I made my like classic style dungeons, they were always the like every room has the same exact architecture and just the middle changes. Um, this one is. I guess essentially the same thing as that, but has, like, varying room shapes. I'm not sure what the advantage to using a dungeon D-map actually is, though, other than having ability to do easier doors. Because you can just kind of, like, use pre-built ones instead of having to make them on your own. Okay, so let's do this. That'll probably get rid of that dark block. Yeah. And then... I guess this block I can probably push in any direction. Yeah. We want to do this, because this can only move left. The other one can only move down, and then we'll do all that. So was this actually mandatory, or was this just for, like, money? This might be for, like, the boss key. I always forget that boss keys exist in Zelda Classic. Because I don't think they actually work properly in this version, do they? Yeah, that's definitely a boss key. Um, does it actually show up in my inventory? No. I remember there being a problem with boss keys in Dr. Wily's Revenge. There's like this crowbar that you use to open an area which is coded as a boss key and it like doesn't actually... Like, I think the lock block doesn't require it, or something. It's, like, some weird glitch. I don't know. I guess maybe since this is a different dun- like, since this is a dungeon D-map, maybe there's a boss key door pre-built in. I'm not familiar enough with the mechanics of 192 to really say that. Probably something I should learn, though, because Dictips Adventure 3 is going to be using 192. Looks like we pretty much explored the whole level. I was missing... Like I said, it looks like... I got five... No, hold on. Yeah, it's really just that one screen, and it's the Dodongo screen, so never mind. I guess all that exploration earlier was for no reason. God, boss roars. I forgot how loud those were. Because all the sound effects in this are freaking loud. I'll have to mess around off-screen and see if I can figure out how to fix some of the sound balance in this. Clearly the solution is to use the wrong version. I'll just play it in 210, and that way it'll load all the wrong enemies. Okay, so this is definitely not a lock block. This is actually a door. Let me explain what I'm talking about for a second here. In Zelda Classic, like I said, dungeons can have doors that are kind of pre-built that, like, you can have, like, an opening, a door that opens when the enemies are dead, um, like a bombable wall, a walk-through wall, or a locked door. Um, and then there's basically ways to recreate those manually if you're not doing a dungeon-style level, um, including locked doors. There's a thing called a lock block, where if you push up against it while you have a key, it consumes the key and gets rid of the block. So... Right now, I'm pushing up on this tile and this tile, and it's not consuming the key. But if I press against the middle, it does. So that means it actually is a pre-built door. And I'm assuming that the boss key was actually required for that. 
Since it doesn't show up in the inventory, I have no way of confirming this, but that's that would make sense at least. Oh boy, Aquamentus. Let's frickin' use arrows, they're stronger than the sword. Let's not die, please. Alright. So I'm noticing I still have an extra key. Um, so everything I said about... Uh, just gonna hear this song for a second. Everything I said about uh, dungeon or quest designers not liking to give extra keys, I guess I was wrong. Oh boy, layering. Yeah, layering. Yes. I don't remember this at all. Oh boy, I'm glad I did that then. West Island filled with trees and vegetation. So that's the one with the uh, Secret of Mana music, I think. I'm not sure why there's two portals, because they're both probably the same thing. You can't really have more than one tile warp on a screen without some fuckery. So, alright. Well, that was level one. I, uh, decidedly do not have the raft yet, so I can't actually leave. I'm guessing I, like, there's probably a boss flag that activated and, like, now, like, Errol will give it to me or something, but... I am not going to worry about that right now. Actually, no. Screw it, I am. I am going to find out <laughs> before I move. I I'll end the video after I find the raft. Boss flags are another piece of shit. I'll have to explain how those work at some point. Um, and by some point, I mean right now. Because um, I'm going to have to have a fair number of those in my game also. And they're really weird. Basically... It's really hard to do anything in Zelda Classic where if you do something in one area, it affects something else. The only way to really do this is with boss flags. And so what you have to do is basically... Like, the traditional way to do it... it wait, hold on. Hold on, I saw that. Look at the map in the top left. Boss flags, okay. I've got to explain this right now. Because that'll make sense now. So, the traditional way it works is with bosses, but it doesn't have to be. So, for the sake of this explanation, I'll just pretend that it is with a boss. Because that's what it was in this case, anyway. Um, there's an optional rule you can set in Zelda Classic called um, Must Kill All Bosses. Which basically means that, like, if you have... God, I'm trying to think how to explain this. You know how in my games, in some of them, there's like, there's rooms with like, a sh just like four boss characters just piled into one room, and you can like kill one, and then leave and come back and they'll all be dead. That's because I don't have the must kill all bosses rule in effect, and um, most quests do not use that for this very reason. So let's say in what you consider level one within the game's coding, you have a boss at the end, and you can put a boss monster in a room without it doing anything, like without it being recognized as a boss, but you can set like a screen flag that says dungeon boss. And so when you kill it, the game recognizes the level one boss is now dead because you went into the room marked like boss room it checked what level it was, and it checked that it was dead. So you've now... The game says that you've killed the level 1 boss. So, in the case of this game, I now walk into this room, and even though it doesn't look like it, I can guarantee you this room is set also as level 1 and has a dungeon boss in it. And the dungeon boss is a trigger enemy, which is an invisible, intangible enemy stuck up in the corner that you can't interact with. And so by killing the level 1 boss, 
the game checks, you don't have the kill all bosses rule in effect, so it automatically kills the one in this room, and therefore triggers a secret combo on this freaking carpet. So, like, you go into the room, it's level one, you're in the room that it shows on the map right now, it activates the secret, you step on the carpet, it's a freaking warp to a different screen. <laughs> so, like, now it's going to lead to something different than it didn't before. Like, and it... Did, did I explain that well? Like, I, I guess you don't really need to know how that works, but I... I enjoy Zelda Classic coding because it's so freaking stupid at times. Like, it... You have to do things in such a roundabout garbage way that it's just kind of amazing. So I'm going to check these other houses and see if they do the same thing. I'm still not doing that. Unless he tells me how to get the raft. But yeah, I'll just go talk to Errol again after this. Oh, oh, I saw that map change. It's cool being able to see it used for little optional stuff like this. Usually, like a... A good example of boss flags being used is not that anyone's going to remember this because it was a game I played like freaking eight years ago, but in Mega Man Dr. Wily's Revenge, there's like, there's the harbor with the ship and there's like this big pile of boxes that blocks your way of getting there. And after you beat the level two boss, the boxes move. That's done through boss flags. Yeah, here we go. Okay. So we are now able to leave. And, um... We'll be doing that next time. I'm just making sure that... Okay. Because, yeah, that's another thing. You don't want to ever... Can I... Continue from this screen. Huh. I'm try I'm trying to like I'm trying to forcefully glitch the game. I guess in this case it didn't really do anything. I don't know, whatever. Continue continue bugs are annoying. I'm I'm not gonna talk about those right now though. Also I just noticed you don't start the game with full health. That's also annoying. Luckily there's a uh Hold on, can I, can I forcefully avoid that warp? No. How do, I, I feel like I did it earlier. I don't know. Whatever. I'm done. I, I gotta stop messing with this game now. We've already saved. Can we crash the program by clicking outside of it? Surprisingly, no. That's... Huh. Earlier it was not letting me do that. But yeah, we'll do more of this game next week. It'll be fun.